Hello, and welcome to this edition of Create a Life You Love with Tony G. I absolutely believe that each and every one of us has a purpose. Our purpose comes from our passion. That passion burns so deeply inside of us that we must respond or react to it and go on that path to create our life. Oftentimes, if you don't, you find yourself being unhappy or feeling like you missed something or you're lost in life. Sometimes you have more than one purpose or passion in your life. Your second passion comes along later on in life. Today's guest, Carrie Marble of Bark and Scratch Outpost, is going to tell us exactly how a passion led her down a road to a purpose not only for her, but for many, many others. Hi, Carrie. Welcome to the show. Hi, Tony. It's wonderful to have you here today. Well, thank you for having me. It's absolutely my pleasure. So the first thing I want to talk about, because I just have to say, in so many ways, you saved my dog and probably a number of other pets, and you have no idea how many pets you've probably helped and saved along the way. That's part of the reason I'm so passionate about having you on this show today. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so how did you first get on this track of pet food? Well, I was lucky enough to have um, a Bichon Fizé come into my life mm -hmm. um, 12 years ago. Uh, her name is Snowbell. And um, I didn't know anything about pet food, or dogs for that matter. And um, we um, experienced some allergy issues within six months of starting the vet recommended food in the puppy pack. Yeah. You know, you go to your, your first puppy appointment and the vet has all the knowledge and they give you a folder and has all the info and that's where I got the variety of food to feed my dog. Right. Did I read the back? No. Did I do any research? No. You know, I just fed Trusted. it. Trusted. That's right. Trusted. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it didn't really turn out so well because she started having um, anal sac problems. Didn't know what an anal sac was. I was quite yeah. confused when he first said that. I was like, what? You know, um, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and then um, we would be walking and having fun activity, and she would turn and bite her side to mm -hmm. the point where she had no fur. They call them hot spots. Mm -hmm. Found that out very quickly. Um, yeah, and it just, we ended up having her anal sacs removed. Um, and this was all within a short six period, six months to a year. Um, because, you know, I, I'm the type of mom that, no, it's not working. We need to try something else. So I'm constantly in the vet clinic trying to figure out what's going on. Um, and for a while there, I thought it might have been one of the worst things I've ever did because there was so much stress in that six months. Yeah. You know, and this poor puppy, you know. Um, but then I lucked out and my groomer um, had some information for me and a, a path that I just wasn't introduced to yet. Exactly. Um, so I was very, very lucky um, that she was the type of person that said, hey, what's going on here? And then she showed me the food that show dogs um, would eat. Nice. Um, and I didn't think there was any difference. I mean, the food company that sponsors the show, is that not the food that the winner eats? No, it's no, not. Most not likely it's not, not if they're right. the winner. <laughs> right. Now, it's so interesting because my story is similar. I have a hairless Chinese crested. And even on his papers, it says he's pink and brown. And my sister jokingly said to me, only you would find a pink dog. <laughs> and I was really proud that I had a pink dog. Yeah. But from day one, he was um, throwing up. Mm. Every time he ate, every time, all this um, and mucus would come out of him. Sure. So I ended up uh, going through all these different foods and I was going to the typical pet stores where they sell the typical things mm -hmm. and I called his, uh, the person who I had gotten him from and she said, no, no, that's perfect, keep him on the food. I'm like, no, 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 do you realize, I, sa I finally said to her, I go, do you know he's actually white and not pink? Oh and she went, there was a gasp, she went, oh. and she said, no, I didn't. So from day one, he had 
had all these allergies. I took him, I got him tested by the vet, and he's allergic to every protein, every filler, really? like oats, barley, corn, potato. Like I'm like, what am I supposed to feed this dog? So I started going to a health food store, and I bought him ostrich. Oh, boy. And he was okay with it, but he was still responding. Mm -hmm. And then somebody turned me on to you guys. Now, yeah. he is already a year old at this point. A year old. Yeah. But by the time I reach you, you um, your store says, hey, try duck. And I'm like, yeah, okay. I'll, I was willing to try anything. And that's the first thing he could eat Yay. that he did not physically react to. So thank you for that. Oh, you're welcome. So your journey helped <laughs> my journey. And again, he was the first pet I'd ever had. So like you, I no idea about these things. Right. I think a lot of people don't. They really don't. No, it's, it's not something that you learn in school, nope. you know. Um, and you see the commercials, it's so easy. You just put the food in the dish and everybody's yep. happy. We ride around in convertibles yep. and we're all good. <laughs> exactly. You know? <laughs> so tell me, how did you go from learning about this food to starting this store with it? Um, it was necessity in a way because okay. we were um, driving um, out of town to get her food. Um, my dog is not only allergic to fillers and certain ingredients, she's actually uh, the processing and a lot of animals, it's the processing yes. of the food. Um, so we were um, trying different types of textures and things um, because of course I was afraid. I wasn't into pet food, you know, the way I am now and, you know, it wasn't as if I was getting encouragement from the veterinarian I was working with. Oh yeah. I was now going off of outside of him trying to find something because his his uh, ending to my dog relationship was to be to euthanize my pet. He had actually said she's a year old, you know, so it, you know, euthanize her, she's no good, start over. And um, I wasn't going to do that. Um, so that's where the processing came into play because I was feeding more natural kibbles without all the fillers um, because that's where I could find them out, you know, in the other um, area of the county. And um, I started seeing results, but not 100%. It was when I actually said, okay, you know what, let's try the frozen. And at first I was so afraid of it, I fed it frozen. I didn't defrost it. I thought if I didn't defrost it, none of that stuff my vet said, you know, would come to be. Um, and the dog ate it anyway, so it didn't matter. Um, right. And as time went on, um, she started getting better and better. Um, so we ended up opening the store because I worked, uh, my husband had a window and door store and we worked the same hours that the store was open we were going to. Um, and we would be home at, and relax in a minute, time to go feed the dog and oh my gosh, I forgot to go pick up the food. Yeah. So it was really out of necessity. And I started going around Milwaukee County trying to find it. There was nobody that sold the raw diet. Right. Um, so um, my husband suggested we had a building on Blue Mound that was kind of sitting idle. Um, a couple of things, you know, just weren't really working out. And he said, why don't you open a pet food store? And I thought at first, like, yeah, right, you know, but I literally went into the freeze freezer, pulled out the bag of food I was feeding, called the 800 number on the back and said, hey, we're going to open a store in Milwaukee. How do we get your food? That's right. literally how it started. And they sent a rep in um, from Middle West, which is one of my biggest distributors. I'm still dealing with them. They're a local, uh, Illinois, you know, but that's kind of local. It's a close, you know, and they um, are small. Right. You know, so what really helps us pick our food is we like to deal with distributors that pick their food with our same mindset. Right. Um, I do have some bigger distributors I work with, but I work with nine distributors to, all together so that we can get the freshest food, the different variety. Um, and a lot of them have the same mindset uh, that we do. You know, we don't want the fillers. We don't want the bad uh, preservatives because you could have great ingredients and then the preservative just wipes it all out. Exactly. exactly. You know? Yeah. Now I'll tell you, when I told my vet I was feeding my dog raw, they about fell on the floor. <laughs> oh yes, I have to tell you, it's been ages. I don't know if anyone will remember this like I did, but my vet put a Mr. Yuck sticker on my folder. A lot of people do not know what Mr. Yuck is. Mr. Yeah. Yuck was a sticker that you put on all your products before they had those things that stopped the cupboards from being opened by yes. kids. Yeah. So you put Mr. Yuck stickers on, and during the uh, cartoons, there would be commercials, Mr. Yuck, Mr. Yuck, I and remember you don't those. Yes. touch it. 
And I was like, where did you get a Mr. Yuck sticker from? And why raw is it on my yeah, folder? Raw <laughs> theater he writes across the folder. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And you know, the funny thing is, one of the vets that I went through in trying to find a remedy for my dog, literally, like my dog's allergic to chicken. He's like, feed him this food. I'm like, it's chicken. He said, but they hydrolyze it differently. I said, does it come from a chicken? Because he's still allergic to chicken. Right. And for 10 minutes, and every time, still to this day, every time I take my dog in, if something's wrong, they're like, we need to test him in case he got some back, bad bacteria from your raw. That is never it. No, it's, that, it's, it's no. never it. No, they, they no. just don't get it. Because no. why would the bacteria part of the animal be put into the raw diet to begin with? They have higher standards. They have much higher standards. They're not going to put that type of ingredient you know, in. Let me tell you. It's not even nutritious. My sister's dog is outside killing birds all the time. Right. They can handle <laughs> this it. This is how they eat if they were in the wild. Right. They can handle a lot of the more natural, you know, like salmonella, things like this. A lot of the natural dog foods are getting recalled over things that don't even make the pet sick. Yeah. You know, um, and a lot of times it's the, the human's not going to wash their hands. Sometimes it's just um, they didn't have like the enough uh, vitamins, you know, in it, yeah. and it's really um, s sad that it can take one complaint on a natural food diet to get a recall, where ben other food companies have had issues for years, and they just keep getting like uh, away in court. You know, they drop the cases, nothing happens, there's no accountability, yet you can find proof all over the place that certain products that are very popular are very deadly to for animals. your pets yes. yeah, especially fed every day twice a day or and just because your your vet is recommending it or it says vet recommended we have to remember there was a time when doctors smoked and cigarettes were refreshing yes so now speaking of that i happen to know for a fact that you go through all the ingredients on a label and check out all the ingredients you look them up yourself. The staff before, members, yes. Yeah, before you let a product come into your store. Yes, many moons ago when uh, my husband and I were the only employees, we, we did all of that. But now we have excellent staff, um, yes. and it is their mission. I can go to a trade show, and I think everything's great. And nope, they're sitting there going, uh-uh, send this back. You didn't catch this, or you didn't see that. Um, you know, we call companies. Uh, what color, caramel color are you using? Is it one, two, three, or four? because right. we know that it's the way it's extruded. And two of the numbers are okay because they're extruded without chemicals, and two of the numbers are not because they're extruded with chemicals, and those are gonna be the ones that are gonna be the cancer-causing carcinogens when all is said and done being cooked. Now, yeah. if we can't get the answer from that company, which one they're using, we don't sell that product. Good and then we'll know. tell you that's why we don't sell that product, but here's a product that's similar. You know, and it's up to you. If you want to go to another store and find that product, you know, great. Um, we'll support you when you come in. We're not going to be upset. Um, but we will continue to educate you. Exactly. And that's the most important thing. Right. So how long ago did this journey start? How long have you had the store now? 11 years. Awesome. Yeah, Snowbell's 12, and the store is 11 years. Wow, that's mm -hmm. a, that is such an amazing journey. So now I've come in the store... Each and every one of your employees is trained on everything? No, not all of them, but the ones that are on the sales floor, um, the warehouse staff. Now, if you happen to see JT stocking something, he's not going to be able to answer that in-depth question, but he's going to get someone who can. Yes. Um, he might be able to answer some basic questions. Um, but So everybody in the store is knowledgeable, but not as in-depth as some of the questions might be. So, But we always make sure that somebody like myself or Lizzie or John or my husband yeah. is always there uh, when we're open or at least reachable. Um, so if something does come in, um, we can do our best. Now, sometimes we might have to do some research, you know, um, but a lot of the um, issues that come in, foundation of health. You just really break it down to getting rid of all of the fillers, getting rid of the processed uh, food, try to get on less processed food, you know, more of the real, what like you were saying in the wild, the organ meat, yes. you know, less, they don't need, they don't have what it takes to break down those gabonzo beans and the peas and the potato, all that stuff your dog's allergic to. Yeah. When do they eat it in the wild? It's right. something we've added to replace the fibers and things from their, the body of the prey. Exactly. You know, um, that's why raw is like so awesome. It's like prey in a bag. You know, uh, we're missing, of course, some uh, coat and stuff, but you've got the organs and you've got the nutrition without all that cooking. Right. 
Right. Um, so your animal is able to assimilate it without having to use all this extra energy because when they have to break down the kibble, their body just doesn't have what it needs. So the liver, the brain, the kidneys have to kick into the stomach, whatever liquid they have or body fluids, whatever you want to call it, so it can break down the, that kibble. And the body works just so hard to do that, that the uh, organs, you know, they're going to be exhausted before they need to be. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, if you can feed the closest you can to what they would eat if you weren't involved, you're going to create a foundation of health so that when, like, ear aches or things like that might have been around for your animal, it was able to shrug it off because it was eating what it really needed to get that foundation of health, have that, you know, strong immune system. Um, so that the body can say, yeah, get out of here. Exactly. You know, instead of, hey, come party with me. I think it's, <laughs> you know, we can compare this to humans where we can say, if we're putting the proper nutrients in our body, we're going to be able to fight things off. But if we're not putting the proper nutrients, if we're eating all preservatives and processed foods, our body isn't going to have what it needs to fight right. off the normal things. That's that, right. The things that we need to fight off. 100%. Absolutely. So one of the questions I have, now your dog has allergies, yes. my dog has allergies. Feeding the right diet, the most helpful diet, isn't only for allergies though. No. No, I know that I'll, I, I, every time I walk in your store, there's a number of people there. What other remedies can be had from feeding your dog the appropriate food? Um, you can actually, um, aggression issues, and yeah. pets not really getting along. Um, there's a lot of sugar when you uh, break down and your body's using the, all those carbs. Carbs turn into sugar. Same thing happens to our pets. The carbs turn into sugar. Well, if you're hyped up all the time, you're not exactly on your nicest game. So you're going to have conflicts within the home because maybe one dog's crabby, the other one wants to play. You know, um, where when you're on a diet that doesn't spike you up like that, you might be a little more in, you know, to get along. Well, maybe I'll play a little bit because I don't really want, right. you know. Or, um, so that really does help. I know it seems weird, but when we go to the different classes with the veterinarians, they talk a lot about getting the unnecessary sugars out of the diet, just like our kids. You wouldn't give your kids a bunch of sugar and then be shocked when they started fighting. You know, exactly. Yes. <laughs> the birthday party is great until all the cake and ice cream comes out, you know, and then the kids are crying and it's time to go home the and meltdown stuff. Right. And we wonder why our pets are different. Yeah. You know, and, and they're really not. No. They're really not. So let's say somebody just can't bring themselves to feed their dog raw. And I get that. Sure. Some people just get, they're too nervous about it. They're too freaked out about it. Maybe their financial situation doesn't allow it. Sure. What is the next best type of food that they can feed? Well, um, raw, raw diet comes in freeze-dried. It comes dehydrated. It comes air-dried. Yeah. Um, I like the air-dried version because <laughs> it's less processing. <laughs> um, canned food is an option. We want to look for as many cans as we can without the PVA in the lining and stuff. Okay. Um, but um, even kibble, because when it comes to cost, um, when you're thinking about cost, sometimes the like a freeze dried, the dehydrated, actually going to cost more. Free, frozen is really the best inexpensive way to buy the raw products, and they're the least processed, so they're most healthiest. But it, sometimes people will buy kibble and the raw because they have a big dog, even if they have small dogs. It depends what their budget is. What you can do is you can take and put water in that kibble. So if the only thing you can do today is afford some free water, go home, get some free water from your tap, put it into your dog's uh, food, let it soak in, let it puff up. That way your dog is not breaking down all that carb. That's such a great tip. Oh my goodness, that is such an amazing tip. Mm -hmm. Now, do you have a, you know, the canned food, the soft versus the kibble? Do you have a choice there or does that not, is it really not as important? Um, canned food, is always going to be the preferred between those two because they are it's less processed it's easier to assimilate you don't have to break it down for them to you know because you do lose a lot in the cooking of the kibble right um but um canned food is going to be expensive compared to kibble so you know really again if you just do what you can if you exactly. wet down your kibble turn into canned food and that's the best you can do that's what you do if you can buy some good quality can because buying a bad quality can isn't going to help nutrition wise okay so you make sure you're looking at the ingredients we want real meats no byproducts no starches you know we don't want any 
um, bad preservatives, you know, because you're not helping. So um, find the most inexpensive can you can that's healthy. We can totally help you with that at the store. We have clearance yeah. items all the time where you can stock up, you know. Um, and most of the time, dogs are going to eat canned food. Most of the time, cats are going to eat it. It's not going to be an issue of they won't, they're getting finicky. Because a lot of times they get finicky because it's hard to eat the product. It's hard for cats to eat dry food. It's hard for dogs to eat dry food. You imagine how you feel when you eat something that's not so great and you get kind of queasy. Yeah. Do you want to feel queasy twice a day every day? No. And the dog can't tell you I'm feeling queasy right now. Because a lot of times they push that aside because they want to play. You know, they got that um, survival of the fittest going on. So they're not going to show you right away they're not feeling good. Unless it's a, an exact reaction where you know, like they eat and they throw up. Well, then you know. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty, pretty basic. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's pretty basic there. Um, but um, the, um, the, um, the really main thing that you want to do is for your budget and for the health of your pet, is you want to put your money into your pet, not your vet. You know, so right. don't save your money. Don't say, I'm going to skimp here, because then you're going to be giving it there. Right. So most people love their pets, you know, more than they love a lot of people. So you might as well take your resources, so true. your love, your time, you know, your money, and put it into the animal you love instead of waiting for a problem and putting it into the veterinarian. Exactly. exactly. Um, and that's what we really help you do in an affordable way. One of our main goals at the store is to make natural foods affordable. You can't feed it if you can't afford it. Exactly. And you do. I mean, it is one of those things where also if you don't feed the right, just like humans, if you don't eat the right things now, if you don't feed the right things now, later on down the line, you're going to end up paying for it in yes. veterinary costs and health problems yes. with your pet or with yourself. Right, right. Now, speaking of that, let's go to treats. Okay. Because everybody wants to give their dog treats. And you see all these treats on commercials. And one of the things that I love about your store also is because my dog can only eat duck, mm -hmm. you have pure duck. Like you have duck liver, duck necks, duck feet. I mean, every yes. part of that duck is used. <laughs> and my dog loves it. Yes. So tell, tell, tell me a little bit about some, because I can only go in the duck area, but I know <laughs> you check your treats just as strictly as you do your food. Yes, people give a lot of treats. You're they eating do. three, four, five a day. I mean, you, the customer will say, oh, I don't give many. It's three, four, five a day, every day. You know, sometimes that can have more effect than the food, yes. especially with the ingredients and stuff. So yes, again, we go through. I really like the meat-based, um, uh, organ-based, body part-based treats, because that's, again, you're going to go yeah. for what they're going to get in the wild. You're going to get more nutrition. You're treating with a purpose. Yeah. You know, if it's like the duck feet you're talking about, help clean your dog's <laughs> teeth. Um, also, it's helping with um, glucosamine because it's natural glucosamine. So it's going to help with some hip and joint issues, you know, and you, you don't get that out of a lot of the treats that are on the market today. Um, I can have people come into the store and they're um, doing everything they can food wise and it's something is just not jiving with the dog's not getting as well as you think or something's not dissipating like you think it would. Um, and it turns out they're feeding a low value treat. Yeah. Or they're getting that treat at the bank every third day when they go. You know, and treats are so important. Um, you know, do you have to be mindful with everything you put in your pet's mouth? Exactly, exactly. And you also offer um, a, a number of supplements and uh, what I call, uh, uh, is it a pet apothecary? Yes, I love pet apothecary. Yes, oh my goodness. <laughs> and some herbs, some really good minerals and herbs. Yes, and Herbsmith, very all local. Types of uh, different for everything from. We have essential oils and we have the different. Um, uh, they smell, I can't think of the name of it right now, but you smell them and they help. And then um, you have all the tinctures, we have um, powdered, you know, whatever way your pet needs to get it. We have them in capsules and chewables. You cook out, even the, the slightly processed foods, you're still cooking out a lot of the nutrients. So to get it back in, that's where the supplements come into play because you're getting it in at a good dosage. 
Right. Um, yeah, the food can boast it's got glucosamine in it, but the majority of it was cooked out. Right. Um, so really, you need to add these supplements um, into the diets. And as soon as possible, a lot of times puppy on, you want to do the glucosamine, you want to do the um, enzymes and the probiotics. Um, you know, because you got to get it in there, you got to keep the system going. You can't keep your car running if you don't have oil in it. Exactly. You know, it's not going to work. You got to change that oil, you got to change the air filter, you know, you got to do some maintenance, you know, so you have to stay up on the maintenance of your pet. And for some pets, it's a necessity. They need some of the, if they start to get arthritis, if they start to get some of the um, heart problems. Sure. Um, there are supplements for pets, just like there are supplements yes. to help people. Oh yeah, we have kidney and liver supplements, you know, you've got heart supplements, you have supplements that are good just overall, like they've got some hip and joint, they got some daily stuff, they got some enzymes, you know. Yeah. So we have individualized, we have all together, um, all different types, um, What? It, but the important thing is that the staff knows how to tell you which one to use for the condition you're describing. Exactly, exactly. You know, that's the big thing. Um, so let's, uh, we just have a couple minutes left. Okay. Tell everybody where you're located. Sure. Um, we're at 5835 West Blue Mound Road. Um, that's Holly Road in Blue Mound in Milwaukee. Right. And your website address? Is MilwaukeePetFood.com. Excellent. Excellent. Carrie, I want to thank you so much for being such a magnificent guest. Thank and you. More so, I want to thank you because without you, I don't know if I would have found what my dog needed when he needed it. Well, he needed it right away. I wish I would have found it sooner. And that's part of why this show is so important to me too because there are so many people out there that have pets. They have no idea what's, like they know something's wrong with their pet. Right. But their vet is leading them down the same road. Mm-hmm, I totally And they that. just need another door to open. Right. Absolutely. Right. I am so lucky I had that, vet, that uh, a groomer in my life, and I want to be my groomer to everybody else. Absolutely. You know, yeah, Thank the information you. has got to be there. Absolutely. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. You have been watching Create a Life You Love. Remember, only you can take control of your life and take your passion, turn it into your career and your purpose. So, What's burning inside of you? What is it that you really are passionate about? Go out, do it, and make yourself have an amazing life. This has been Tony Green. Uh, you can reach me on my website, www.tonig.info. <laughs> and I'm also on Facebook, Twitter, and a couple of other social media things that I can't remember. Thanks for watching. Have an amazing life.